For the past three weeks, we spoke about a complete story about inheritance. I really hope that you actually enjoyed the discussion for all the subtopics of inheritance, like a type casting, polymorphism, dynamic binding, substitution, and etc. Uh, please review the previous lectures before you actually see uh, this week's. And this week, I would like to start talking about uh, two things, uh, two constructs, namely abstract classes and in, uh, interfaces. They are still, to some extent, relevant to uh, the inheritance lecture. They are more like uh, case studies or applications of the principle that we learned from the previous lecture. So conceptually, it's really not that much new. We have to uh, we we need to know in order to learn about abstract classes and interfaces. But rather, it's really important for you to really get a guidance, which I will supply at the end of the lecture, about when to use which. When should you use abstract classes and when should you use interfaces? So there is some general guidance I can give to you. And then to really obtain the practical experiences, it will be up to you. I will suggest some practical exercises as well. Okay, so let's now take a look at the learning outcomes before we dive into the technical contents. By the end of uh, this uh, module, I would like you to learn about the following. So we should really learn about what an abstract method is and also what, uh, what an abstract class is. So if you want to learn about abstract class, it must be because you actually got at least one method that's actually abstract. So that's something we should speak about why this could be useful to simply leave a uh, method abstract. Right? We should really learn about what an interface is. And let me give you some quick uh, definition right away. You can think about an interface is more like an extreme case of abstract class, uh, abstract class, where all the methods are simply abstract. So that's something you keep in mind, and then we'll see exactly how and how this uh, extreme can be useful. Okay. And we're gonna reinforce the polymorphism and dynamic binding as I said in the beginning. Uh, the abstract classes and interfaces are conceptually uh, not much new, but you just have to uh, reinforce your understanding about polymorphism and dynamic binding. That's something we'll see, especially polymorphic collection. Right? That's something we spoke about earlier as well, last week. And we should really draw the line uh, between when to use abstract classes versus when to use interfaces. You should really know when. So when you actually develop your projects, even beyond this course, you will have a good judgment call about which one to use. All right, let's now, first of all, consider abstract classes. And let me present some motivating problem to you. So unlike what we did for uh, the very beginning of the inheritance lecture, remember we actually talked about two or three alternative designs uh, for implementing the student management system. But for this one here, I will go directly into the uh, the ultimate solution. But I will definitely mention a little bit about how you can you uh, how you can implement this problem here in a slightly less ideal way by using pu uh, just inheritance without using abstract classes. That's something I will show to you. But you can definitely try to actually explore different alternatives yourself. And then if you got any doubts about how to criticize them, let me know. Uh, I can maybe give you some feedback. Okay, let's see what our problem is. Let's say we're trying to solve the problem for a polygon, right? Like a shape with many sides. So a polygon may either be, let's say, a triangle or rectangle. Let's say we make the assumption that we only consider these two polygons. Given the polygon, we may either, so these are the three functionalities we would like to support. So now you want to think about in your head, how do I support this polygon problem, including triangle and rectangle using the inheritance concept I learned previously, right? That's something you want to think about. I'll definitely uh, let you pause the video and think about it in a moment. Okay, so for each polygon, we may want to grow its shape by incrementing the size of each of the sides. For example, if you've got a triangle, let's say it's a three, four, five triangle, you may want to increase it to six, eight, uh, 10, for example, right? Just increasing the size by certain size. And, or you may want to compute and return its uh, parameter, right? Just about the summation of the sides. Or you may want to compute its area. So I want to give you one question right away. You can pause the video and think about it, right? We talk about the supervision level for inheritance is to really have code reuse. If you're going to develop, let's say, a common parent class for triangle and also rectangle, based on the uh, description so far for these three functionalities, can you tell me which functionality can be defined as a common method that's in the parent class that can be directly used verbatim by rectangle and triangle. And one method may not be so universal between triangle and rectangle so that you cannot really define a common implementation in the parent class that can be uh, reused verbatim by rectangle and triangle. Okay, so that's my question. If you didn't quite hear the question clearly, please rewind the video and then hear my question. 
All right, so pause the video and think about it. Okay, assuming that you thought about it, so this should be the answer, okay? Given that uh, triangle and also rectangle, they are both polygons. So the way we implement them can just be an array of integers. Let's say the size is simply of units integer, okay? So triangle is going to be an array of size three. Rectangle is going to be an array of size four. So far it makes sense, right? And then in order to grow the shape, by incrementing the size of each of the uh, each of the sides, we can simply go uh, go to increment each of the uh, three members in the triangle array, and in this case, we can go to increment each of the four members of the rectangle array, right? Just about its size. And what about parameter? Well, by the very definition for parameter, we will simply just increment. Uh, oh, sorry, we'll simply su uh, we just do the summation of the sides. In this case, we're gonna uh, add up all the three sides of the triangle. In the array, and in the case of rectangle, how do we calculate its parameter? We simply sum up the four sides in the array, right? What about area? Do you have a universal way to calculate the area for triangle and also rectangle? Do you have such a universal way that can be de uh, that can be defined in the parent class, let's say polygon, and that can be simply reused? verbatim without being overridden in both tri uh, triangle and the rectangle subclasses? The answer is maybe you cannot, right? So that means we may need some specific version for calculating area in both triangle and also rectangle. So that's something, uh, it's been a quite a bit of a verbal remark. I'm just trying to tell you the design rationale for, for the ultimate solution, okay? Let's now talk about just the area. We know very well, in order to calculate a rectangle, we simply uh, just do this uh, multiplication between length and width. That's very easy. What about triangle? Let's say give it an array of three numbers. Let's say three, four, and five. How do we actually calculate the area of triangle given any arbitrary three sides? Assuming that the three numbers are actually uh, valid, right? Well, so I'm not sure how many of you actually have heard about this, something called the Herren's formula about calculating any arbitrary uh, triangle, right? So this is called the uh, Herren's formula. If you got any doubts, please look it up online if you got any curiosity. Otherwise, you can take it for granted, okay? And this will be the formula and which uh, for which we're gonna just uh, implement verb uh, faithfully. So let's say we got two sides for the triangle, uh, three sides. We got A, we got B, and also we got C, A, B, and C. And also S over here, is simply half of the parameter over here, right? You can see S. And the, Her the Heron's formula tells you this. Given any arbitrary uh, triangle, A, B, and C, and also half of its uh, parameter, you can calculate the area by doing this multiplication and then take its uh, square root. You can definitely plug in some value. Maybe, for example, let the, the right angle triangle, three, four, five. You can actually use that uh, triangle value to actually uh, check this formula. It's actually valid. You can definitely check the formula. Again, it's called Heron's formula for your information, okay? We're gonna we are not going to prove it, right? I will leave that to you if you are interested. All right, so this is the question, right? The design problem. How would you solve this problem here in Java while minimizing code duplicates. In order to really minimize the code duplicates, we have to make sure we, de uh, we declare methods in the parent class, let's say polygon, that can be reused as much as possible by the two subclasses, in this case, triangle and also rectangle. Based on what I have said so far, I, I actually gave you quite many hints about how you may actually implement uh, these uh, polygon, uh, this polygon problem over here for its solution. Why don't you pause the video, grab a piece of paper, and then sketch out the solution based on what you have learned earlier. So I would highly recommend you actually do this exercise rather than directly seeing uh, the solution walk through to, together with me. I'm pretty sure you'll gain something if you try to compare your solution against mine. All right, so you can now pause the video.